Less than 24 hours after the Gaza ceasefire came into effect, the diplomatic fallout. I'm here to announce my resignation from the role of the Defense Minister of the State of Israel. The question which needs to be asked is why now? As far as I'm concerned, what happened yesterday, yesterday's ceasefire, together with the entire process of reaching an arrangement with Hamas, is a capitulation to terror. Outgoing Defense Minister Avidor Lieberman also said he disagreed with Qatar bringing $15 million into Gaza last weekend to pay the salaries of civil servants and the fuel shipments that have increased Gaza's electricity. Moves that are all parts of efforts to ease Gaza's humanitarian situation. Hamas wasted no time in reacting to Lieberman's resignation. This constitutes a victory for the resistance and recognition of defeat and failure by Lieberman and the Zionist occupation. And it is a failure of the policy of siege and devastating wars against the Gaza Strip. This is the result of our Palestinian people's steadfastness. Hamas had already celebrated the earlier ceasefire as a victory for the Palestinians too. Gaza is of course a large reason for Lieberman's resignation, but there is no denying that domestic political factors are also at play. One Israeli media report describes the resignation as the opening salvo of Israel's elections. The expectation is that the elections set for November next year will be brought forward. What's happened now in Israeli politics is a major event because you have the defense minister, which is the number two position in the government, and a party in this government has resigned. And he's resigned and basically showed his no confidence with the prime minister. Now, it's not going to bring down the government right away. It could. It could lead to elections. But he's showing, he's positioning himself to be the the opponent to Netanyahu, the opponent to the right of Netanyahu. What the events of the last few days show is that Gaza will remain at the center of Israeli politics as long as the situation there remains unresolved. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera, West Jerusalem. The choice is clear. We can choose to leave with no deal. We can risk no Brexit at all. Or we can choose... choose to unite and support the best deal that can be negotiated. This deal, a deal that ends free movement, takes back control of our borders, laws and money, delivers a free trade area for goods with zero tariffs, leaves the common agricultural policy and the common fisheries policy, delivers an independent foreign and defence policy, while retaining the continued security cooperation to keep our people safe, maintain shared commitments to high standards, protects jobs, honours the integrity of our United Kingdom, and delivers the Brexit the British people voted for. I choose to deliver for the British people. I choose to do what is in our national interest, and I commend this statement to the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I want to thank the Prime Minister for an advanced copy of her statement. The withdrawal agreement and the outlined political declaration represent a huge and damaging failure. After two years of bungled negotiations, the government has produced a botched deal that breaches the Prime Minister's own red lines and does not meet our six tests. Yeah. The government, Mr Speaker, is in chaos. Their deal risks leaving the country in an indefinite halfway house without a real say. When even the last Brexit secretary, who theoretically at least negotiated the deal, says, I cannot support the proposed deal, what faith does that give anyone else in this place or in this country? The Trump administration has announced sanctions on individuals as Saudi Arabia alleges is responsible for the killing of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. RT's Dan Cohen has the latest. Sanctions the Treasury Department unveiled target 17 people Saudi Arabia claims are responsible for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. Among them, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's former top advisor Saud al Kastani, also Maher Mutreb, who is alleged to have coordinated and carried out the killing, and the Consul General Mohammed al-Otaibi.
Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said in a statement, quote, the Saudi officials we are sanctioning were involved in the abhorrent killing of Jamal Khashoggi. These individuals who targeted and brutally killed a journalist who resided and worked in the United States must face consequences for their actions. For its part, Saudi Arabia announced indictments against 11 people, and five of them faced the death penalty. While that may sound extreme, Saudi Arabia executes more people than any other country in the world. The Trump administration's sanctions seem to accept the Saudi version of events, which changed over the weeks, but maintained Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had no knowledge of events. The Saudis first claimed Khashoggi had left the consulate in Istanbul alive, then said he was killed in an interrogation gone wrong, then in a fist fight, then in a chokehold, and finally, they said he was murdered by rogue agents. Notably, the sanctions the Trump administration announced do not target the economy or interfere with the massive weapons deals the country signed earlier this year. Reporting in Washington, Dan Cohen, RT. Today, uh, during the course of our search, an additional eight human remains were recovered. That brings the total up to 56. There were people literally burning in their cars running down the street, abandoning their, re abandoning their vehicles, dying on the road. It was just utter panic. Tehran condemns Washington's starvation threat, saying that Iran will survive despite U.S. sanctions. In a tweet, Iran's foreign minister said his American counterpart open threat to starve the Iranian nation is a crime against humanity. Mohammad Javad Zarif accused Mike Pompeo of desperately trying to impose U.S. whims on Iran. Zarif said Iranians will not just survive, but they will thrive without sacrificing the country's sovereignty. The comments came after the U.S. Secretary of State said that Tehran must listen to Washington if it wants Iranian people to eat. The U.S. announced the reimposition of sanctions against Iran's banking and energy sectors with the aim of cutting off its oil sales and crucial exports. The bans had been lifted under the 2015 nuclear deal, which uh, the U.S. withdrew from in May. Political commentator David Yarubian has told Press TV that the U.S. Secretary of State's anti-Iran statement shows Washington's cruelty toward the Iranian people. The recent statements by uh, Mike Pompeo and other uh, foreign policy elites as they gleefully proclaim uh, what, is, what is going to be uh, coming to Iran uh, by way of the sanctions is, is uh, very reminiscent of uh, Madeleine Albright's uh, gleeful statement, or I, I guess I shouldn't say gleeful, but her, her uh, direct statement in 1996 in which um, she stated that the uh, death of 500,000 Iraqi babies as a result of the uh, American sanctions on Iraq was, quote, worth the price, end quote, of keeping the Saddam Hussein government contained. And so um, these uh, rather cruel and inhuman statements coming out of uh, particularly Mike Pompeo, I believe, should be uh, understood in the same vein. And, and so in that context, the Donald Trump uh, regime is really con uh, continuing in the path of its uh, predecessors. In America, they said that they gave Iran billions of dollars. We gave Iran $150 billion and $1.8 billion in cash. Nigeria would like some of that. But they never said that they were holding 
over $150 billion of Iranian money and they were supposed to give it back during the treaty arrangements. It's not true. It's absolutely not true. But has Iran gotten that money back yet? I would have doubled and tripled up the sanctions and I would have made a much better deal. How dare you say that we cannot criticize your evil and point it out to you? I am more of a patriot than most of you who bow down to evil and it is only truth that will make America better. I am begging our president and the government that supports him to be very, very careful because if the trigger of war in the Middle East is pulled by you using your surrogates at the insistence of Israel, then the war will trigger another kind of war which will bring China, Russia, all of the nations into a war and it bothers me to say this to you, Mr. President, but the war will end America as you know it. So when these Iranians chant death to America, death to Israel, I'll be honest with you, I want to save the country. Our country's going to hell. No chant can bring about your death, but it is your policies that are eroding trust for you in the world, favor for you in the world. We chant death to their cruelty and their colonialism, but we don't have any problems with the American people themselves. We have love for them, in fact. And if you do this, you will bring about, not the Iranian chant, you will bring about the death of the greatest nation. I know that chant came from the people of Iran. Why should we be controlled? Who is America to control us? Your behavior is not very good. Your politics is about war and it's terrifying. And this sanction is what's hurting the people of Iran. They have a right to chant it. Our problem is with American politicians, those who are after war and bloodshed. But I am not a chanter. I am a worker for God, and the truth will undo falsehood, and the righteous will win against the wicked, not with a chant. In America, they said that they gave Iran billions of dollars, but they never said that they were holding over $150 billion of Iranian money and they were supposed to give it back during the treaty arrangement. But has Iran gotten that money back yet? Can anybody answer that question for me? What is going on in Yemen is a crime against humanity. Wherever human beings are persecuted, there has to be an uprising against persecution. Luis Farhan, who's the leader of the Nation of Islam movement, was speaking during a press conference at Press TV's headquarters in the Iranian capital, Tehran. He said the Muslims need to be united and to rise up against the crimes being committed. He also called on the media to write about the truth and to reveal it to correct the governments. Elsewhere in his speech, Farhan criticized the Trump administration for pushing for discord among the Muslim community. President Trump went to Riyadh I saw him with pictures of a new uh, jet uh, fighter planes. Show 
showing it to the king and then they announced a hundred and ten billion dollar sale of weapons to Saudi billions of dollars for weapons but if you listen carefully to his speech he was making toxic the division between Sunni and Shia and aiming those weapons subtly toward Iran and then openly saying to all of those nations they should reject their brother Iran. Farhan also criticized Trump for imposing sanctions on Iran despite Tehran's full compliance with the 2015 nuclear deal. He said the measures would harm the Iranian nation and must stop. He responded to some criticism for his trip to Iran, saying that America is his homeland and loves his country, but he would stand by the people of Iran vis-a-vis -vis the sanctions. The American Muslim leader has been in Iran for the past few days. He's had a meeting with Iran's leader Ayatollah Saadi Khamenei. And Iranian President Hassan Rouhani vowed to defy U.S. sanctions. We have to make Americans understand that they cannot talk to the great Iranian nation with the language of pressure and sanctions. They have to be punished by history. Rouhani went on to say that the current U.S. administration is the most racist in history. But on Monday morning, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo threatened other countries doing businesses with Iran. Back in May, over 100 countries have withdrawn from Iran or canceled plans to do business there. It should be noted that if a company evades our sanctions regime and secretly continues sanctionable commerce in the Islamic Republic, the United States will levy severe, swift penalties on it, including potential sanctions. I promise you that doing business with Iran in defiance of our sanctions will ultimately be a much more painful business decision than pulling out of Iran and it being connected to Iran entirely. How dare you say that we cannot criticize your evil and point it out to you? I am more of a patriot than most of you who bow down to evil and it is only truth that will make America better. And I speak that truth and I will be back in <laughs> Oh